You're right, guys. Hope you're well. So, you may recognize this vaguely from a little while ago. We made some elderflower champagne using no brewing equipment at all, nothing. And we ended up with this actually very, very nice elderflower champagne. Now it's been bottled away. I did give away most of it, but I did keep a little bit for myself. Oh, that smells good. It smells like summer. So, pour myself out a beautiful glass of chilled elderflower champagne. Okay, well, I'll just pour it all over the side. Bubbly. So, uh, cheers. Smells like summer. Mmm, that is good. So we can do this because we changed the method of how we made elderflower champagne. We let it go to dryness, we back sweet it, and then we control the amount of carbonation. That way we can store it long term, and it just gets better with age. But, what we're making today is something even more fancy and regal than that. We're making fancy elderflower champagne with gold. That sounds pretty cool. So the idea is pretty straightforward. We're going to be making some elderflower wine that is sparkling. So to make an elderflower wine, we want something with a bit more body. I mean, elderflower champagne is nice, it's lovely, but it's good sweet. I want a dry wine. That's what I want. So I'm going to be using just some grape juice concentrate. I know if you've watched the uh, wine from grape juice concentrate video, it tasted like onions. Now there wasn't enough nutrient in there. And uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much what it was. Not good to ferment on its own, but as an addition into a wine such as this, it's gonna be excellent. Now I've got two cheeky lemons. I'm going less on the lemon because I want to bring out some of the wine flavors. And I've also got, it is about 14 heads of elderflowers that I froze last year. They are looking a little brown, but they still smell fantastic and good to go. So if you don't have elderflowers, kicking around in your freezer. I will also stick a link down to Amazon so you can buy these. They're pretty much the same price everywhere you go, so uh, there we go. Now, one last thing before we begin. The gold, the real Italian gold. Now, these gold leaves, um, they're kind of small. They're about three centimeters squared-ish. And uh, they sent me back about three pound 50 for five of these. Now I'm not going to be using all five, um, I'm going to be giving some of these bottles away as gifts, so I'm going to be adding in the gold leaf to make it look a bit more fancy. But you can add this into anything you want, just be careful where you buy it from. There are a lot of companies that sell imitation gold, and some of the companies actually have the name like Pure Gold or 24 Karat, things like that. So I'll stick the link down to Amazon, whether you buy it or not, so you can check it out and see what it is you should be getting. Um, it's kind of you know, just, just letting you know. Be careful what you buy in imitation gold leaf because uh, you only want the edible, real 24 karat gold stuff on no base. <sighs> right, that being said, let's get into this. So the first step is preparing the lemons. Now, knife, chopping board, fairly straightforward. Now, don't put the white in your thing there. Because we're going to be steeping it, you're going to start getting some of those bitter flavors from the pith, the white bit of the lemon. I've seen people uh, make videos saying how the white bit is bitter, and then they'll just cut the lemons and stick slices in there. We don't want to do that. Because this is going to be aged, we want to make it as nice as possible. So uh, I'm just going to strip off as much as I can. Now if you get a little bit of white, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. So. Uh, going. So the lemons have been peeled, as you do. So there are still a bit of white on there, but nothing to worry about. A little bit is fine. It's just, you know, just dumping the whole lemon in. That will start giving off a bit of flavors the longer you steep it for. So uh, the elderflowers are already being pre-processed. I took the extra time making sure I just got the flowers and none of the stalks. Some people use the stalks with it on. I don't like it. Um, it tastes bitter and astringent. Um, in 
my opinion, so taking that extra time to remove the stalks, it's a good, good option. So, what I've got here is just an ordinary stainless steel pan. Now, if you've got a, a demijohn in a brew bucket, use that. But uh, you can just use a pan. So, in goes a lemon. And now, in goes a lovely Frozen but smelling good. Elderflowers. So as you know, I am not a great fan of preservatives, so uh, I'm going down the boiling route. I'm going to quickly scorch the elderflowers and the lemon. It will release a lot more flavour and it kills off all the wild yeast and bacteria inside there. If you don't want to do that, you can add cold water and use a Camden tablet. It will only uh, make it smell funky for about 24 hours. So uh, I'm going to add in my boiling water. So in theory this is all sterile now. Now because we didn't add any sugar or anything like that, there shouldn't really be any problem with bacterial growth or that overnight. For the next 12 hours should be fine. Now one last step because well our wine needs some extra acidity. Now I was just gonna go with one lemon but we're making a gallon batch and I uh, kind of lost a little bit of faith in this after the uh, last brew so I'm gonna be adding the juice of two lemons. Normally when I'm making elderflower champagne I go nutty with a lemon. I can never have enough lemon but since this is gonna have wine flavors I don't want it to overpower the wine. So got myself a cocktail. Doesn't need to be sterilized. I just want to collect the pips and just squeeze these bad boys in here. That's smelling really good already. Really smells of elderflower. Got a little bit of the lemon in there. So I'm just gonna put the lid on. Stick it there. So I've left it overnight, it's actually about the same time of day, so it has been steeping for 24 hours. The longer you steep it for, the more flavour is going to come out. But 24 hours is a good time for elderflower champagne, slash wine. So uh, let's take a look at what we got. Ooh. Oh, that smells good. It's got a really good elderflower flavour. I can smell the lemon in the background should be really good. So let's just stick that out the way. So now is the time that we need to sterilize everything. Now my sterilizing agent of choice is thin bleach, which is like 35p, it's gone up in price, and just some dish soap and washing up liquid. Whichever one you want, and then scrub it out. So I've got my Demijohn, or in my case, a five liter water container. I absolutely love these, they're super cheap. So, uh, I'm gonna go rinse this out until it doesn't smell of bleach anymore, and uh, we're gonna make some wine. So I've gone ahead and I've rinsed out my demijohn. So it smells fresh, but not bleachy. It's definitely sterilized. And I use the excess bleachy soapy water to go through, wipe down my side, sterilize my hydrometer, a funnel, and a sieve. Now you don't need to use the sieve. Um, you can brew it on the chunks, but uh, just makes things easier when you come to bottle it up. So we're going to start off with the cool stuff. We've got our grape concentrate because we want to make this a little bit more fancy and some sugar because well, you can't go wrong with sugar. So we're going to add in all of this stuff because we're cool. So I'm going to start off with my sugar and I'm only going to be adding in three quarters of a kilo, 750 grams you can weigh it out if you want, but ish, that's what we go for. If it's slightly over, doesn't matter. This is where it all goes horribly wrong. I'm gonna use the funnel. And I want about that much, he says. So all of our sugar has been added in, it's looking good. So, want my yeast nutrient? A cheeky teaspoon, I just scorched the teaspoon with boiling water, because, uh, I forgot to pick one up again. Always do that. And then, in it goes. If you lose a little bit extra, not really a problem. Because, well, it, yeah, 
the yeast loves it. So since we've got this far, let us add in our string liquids. Oh, that smells so good. Right, in it goes. The reason that we're adding in this bit first is because, well, we want to make sure we get all of that juicy, tasty loveliness inside our demijohn. There's no point filling it all the way up with water and then having to pour it out. It's a pain. So let's give it a quick press. My hands have been sterilized because uh, I was rinsing out all the bleachy stuff. But uh, yeah, people get a bit OCD about sterilizing, and it's true, but at the same time, Something is only sterile when it's sterile. The moment that you rinse it off, it's no longer sterilized. I think people kind of forget that. And a sanitizer is not a sterilizer. I mean, it's all, it's all pretty, pretty confusing once you get into the actual heart of it. So in goes our grape concentrate. Wanna make sure we got that in there. Oh yes. It looks like tea, but it smells good. Looking good, and I got the magic kettle. Since the kettle has been boiled, it has been sterilized. So I'm just gonna rinse out my, my jus. And pour it all over my hand, I like doing that. There we go. Now I'm adding in more water because the more water there is, the easier the sugar dissolves. Um, you can use hot water as well, but I'm just using warm water from the tap. Now that should be plenty of water to dissolve the sugar in easily, as well as the yeast nutrients. So uh, stick your cap on and now shake it like you mean it. So we've shaken it all up, it's looking good. Uh, plenty of water, so it's time to top it up and then give it one more swirl and then let the foam die down, because well, you can't take an accurate hydrometer reading, even though we work on ish. You kind of want to know. So there we go. Just the last little bit to go. There we go. And that's good enough. So just going to give it the lid on tightly, give it a little swirl. Now just let it rest out for a couple of minutes and we'll take the hydrometer reading. So I've left it for a couple of minutes and it is pretty high up in the demijohn, but because of the way I do my home brewing, perfectly fine. It's actually 4.9 liters. So over a gallon's worth, we're definitely gonna get our six bottles. It's one of the reasons why I love these plastic containers over the official demijohns, because you never get six bottles out of that kit. Anyway, so hydrometer time. Got my hydrometer, got my cheeky liquid, and it goes. So just give it a second just to work itself out. But we added in approximately 750 grams of sugar, probably slightly over, but I work on ish. We don't need everything to be perfectly exact. We're home brewers, not commercial brewers. And I added in one of those concentrates. So uh, it works out roughly, I'm looking for around 11%, maybe slightly over. So I've got my hydrometer. Just give it a little twist and it is reading 11.5%, which is pretty cool. So just flip that around. It is 1.070, we'll call it. So that is pretty good. It tastes good too. It's got just enough elderflower, a little bit of citrus, and I'm getting some of those grapey tastes. Really looking forward to drinking this. So you would be thinking that we're gonna be using a fancy yeast but uh, we're not. We're just going to be using universal wine yeast. It is really good for anything. It's not with the equipment you use. It is the roof. It's the stuff inside the bottle. So uh, here we go. And I'm just literally going to pour it down on. Not even a gram. Uh, just a little bit. It will ramp up slower. Which basically means it's not going to puke everywhere. We don't like puking. So by the time that those seven days, which are normally the most active in fermentation, are over, this 
hasn't puked, which is pretty cool. So I really hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Don't forget to check out some of the other ones. Subscribe if you feel like it. Carry on homebrewing.